Thompson has. Yes, Your Honor. I'm we'll wait till Mr. Colby gets here. Okay, he's a waiter. Okay. I, I need to, I'm going to file a motion to withdraw. Oh, okay. Okay. And we'll wait Mr. Colby is a waiter. We'll figure out where we need to go. All right, let me start then with the matter of Abigail Geyer. Motion to consolidate. Yes, Your Honor. I, I have two right motions on the docket for that. Um, it's, it's become kind of a mess, so we're here just to try to clear it up and get some guidance. Um, All right. Obviously, the, we have. Oh, well, you go ahead. I can say, is it still under, under appeal? It is, Your Honor. There is an a oral argument set for January 19th. Um, but because of that matter being under appeal, and I know the court didn't want to do a lot with that order while it was being appealed. We had filed a petition in um, October to modify the custody arrangement from the one that was entered last October due to a lot of things that happened since then, namely things we found about through mother's posts on her Facebook. Um, the, her older daughter, who's an adult, brought her brought the child to her house after telling dad that she was just going to be spending time, that just the daughter was going to spend time with her issues with continuing to push for homeschooling. Um, she has now started the supervised visits. There were a lot of concerns with the initial supervisor of the visits. Mom posted things on her Facebook about how the supervisor was taking phone calls to discuss other cases while she was supposed to be supervising and was letting mom talk about homeschooling and all this stuff. So we filed a motion to temporarily suspend those supervised visits. In the meantime, before that motion came to be heard, we first talking with the supervisor of the supervisor who was supervising the visit, told her about what happened. She understandably became concerned about that and has put a new supervisor on the case. From what I heard, the new supervisor seems to be doing an excellent job. So we don't have any concerns with that supervisor supervising their, those visits. I do understand that there was an issue with supervised visit yesterday that almost had to be cut off because of comments that mom was making to the child. but. It went okay and it was done. Um, so we don't have a concern at this time. One of the issues is that Ms. Hubble understood from your prior order that after two months of supervised visit, she would automatically revert to unsupervised visits. That was not my understanding, nor the guardian ad litem, nor the ECS's understanding of your order. The order specifically said at least two months and then if the people supervising visits made a recommendation she was ready for unsupervised visits, then we would move to those. Um, the prior supervisor on the case had apparently indicated something like, well, I don't know what the court's going to do. I don't know that it would need to continue. Mom took that to mean, okay, we're good. We're ready for unsupervised visits, and then got very angry when Mr. Gadare would not, did not think that was the case. We have not been told by anyone from Camelot that sh they think she is ready for unsupervised visits. The current supervisor almost had to stop visitations yesterday. So, we just want to clarify what the court's intention was for that, whether it was to keep those going until there had been some proof that she was ready for unsupervised visits. Um, so we had filed that petition, filed the motion to temporarily suspend the visit. In response to that, mom filed an answer where she asked for the usual, that he go to batter's intervention class, that she get full custody, that she be allowed to homeschool, all the things your, your honor has already ruled on. Because of the new supervisor coming in and making the visits a little better, um, we struck our motion to temporarily suspend the visits, not thinking that mom would want to go forward on the motion to temporarily suspend the visits. They showed up on that day. We were not here. It was in front of O'Neill. Um, it was originally filed in front of Rosenberg, but he doesn't have room in his docket to hear an extensive thing, so it was set in front of O'Neill. I have asked to consolidate everything in front of Your Honor. Um, O'Neill is not one of the magistrates that's familiar with very extensive background of this case. Um, I have a feeling that no matter what the decision is by a magistrate downstairs, it's probably going to be appealed. We've already had to go through the trial twice here and then appeals upstairs. I would just rather, if Your Honor is willing, to put it in front of the judge who is, has heard all the testimony, is the one who issued the order and can more speak to the intent. Uh, Mom has also filed a petition for contempt alleging that he, Mr. Gadare is not letting her do the visitation that Your Honor had thought. So we would like for that to be heard in front of Your Honor since you are familiar with the order and what the intent was behind the order. Um, I think it would really simplify things if we can get everything in front of you. 
there's currently a motion hearing in front of O'Neill, I guess tomorrow and Wednesday. It was originally on the 21st at 1.30, but then at the hearing where we had stricken our motion and they showed up, he reset it for the 22nd in the morning in case we didn't get things resolved here today. I would ask that Your Honor, please, please, please just take all of this and um, so we can track it in one place and keep everything together. Um, I also filed a motion to appoint a guardian ad litem. <coughs> Charlita Pimack was originally on the case but is not technically on this new petition. She's on it in the sense that the appeal is still pending, so she's tracking that appeal, but I think um, it would be helpful to have Ms. Pimack back on the case since she's familiar with the child and the child's interests. Um, I also filed a motion to quash a subpoena for Delara. They have issued a subpoena asking that she come to testify in court. Your Honor has ruled many times that that's not appropriate, given how involved she has already been. I would I've asked to quash that subpoena so she doesn't have to show up on, I think it was issued for tomorrow's date. Um, but also, if Your Honor is willing to take all of these things and either do a hearing on, on Ms. Hubble's response today or reset it, or if Your Honor is willing to do a hearing on everything, that would be appreciated. Um, so I think that's it. I, <laughs> I want to quash the subpoena for Delara. We're asking for the appointment of the guardian ad litem, and we're trying to consolidate all of the petitions and get everything before you. The other thing with the consolidation is Ms. Hubble's attorney had filed two petitions for contempt and to modify the parenting plan. The same day that those were filed, Ms. Hubble filed pro se petitions asking for essentially the exact same thing. So I, we just need some instruction from the court. It's getting very difficult to know how to respond, to what to respond when she's represented by an attorney but still filing things on her own that ask for the same thing as what her attorney is asking for. So some direction on that would be very nice. All right. Ms. First of all, I do want to say, Your Honor, I always appreciate the fact when there's been an attorney on a case before, but when I come into a case, one of the first things that I always do is review the orders of the court. Uh, controlling in this case is the order that you had entered uh, a little over a year ago regarding um, mother's contact with the child and with regard to an order of protection at that time when you entered that order there was an order of protection that also included the child so even though you ordered that she was to have two months of supervised visits and then and uh, you know I think the language in that order is not real clear I don't think that the order says that the supervisor is the one to make the recommendation for unsupervised. Uh, I read it somewhat the opposite, that, un that she is to begin unsupervised unless there is a recommendation that she's not ready for it. But anyway, um, as to timing. I will say this very well, on that point, uh, I don't see the order right in front of me, but I, I know my intent would have been that she would have to come back to court. I'd have to have some information about based on the history of the case. I know that that's what the intent was. I don't know what the order is. Well, that is not, yeah. copy and that is not in the order that she has to come back to court. I will tell you that, because that's what I kept asking her. Do you have to go back to court for that? That probably was my intent. Okay, so she did not see her child. We did not have any time with her until the order of protection came up in June in front of Judge Robinson. She went to court on that, and the child was removed from the order of protection. Uh, it was extended, um, so as to um, Mr. Guider, she did her supervised visit just like was ordered to do. She started the end of June, she did July, she did August, and then what she, uh, she thought she was going to have unsupervised, that did not occur. She tried to go to school to see her child. They, they interfered with that. Ms. Um, Rice goes and files a TRO on that and gets the school involved in that again, and then she strikes her TRO, so mother then went ahead and tried to do supervised visits, and the father flat refused. And that is what the, uh, so she didn't see her child at all in September or October. So, you know, that is why there is a petition for contempt, because he failed to comply, and I've talked to the supervisors, and I know what they're going to say. They're going to say they contacted him for supervised visitation, and he refused. He refused. So he is in violation of this court's order. And so, um, yes, I mean, we did file the petition for contempt and the uh, petition to 
<clears throat> modify the order or get some instructions from the order. Um, what Mr. Guider has done is apparently now, and the reason something came up yesterday is because Mr. Guider has created this list of things that mother can't talk about, which we have not seen, and the mother has not seen, and so we don't even know what that is. She doesn't even know what parameters that Mr. Guider has set on the mother, which is, again, inappropriate. That's outside of your order that he can start instructing the supervisor as to what the mother can and cannot say. So that is the problem. Now we have, we were, um, there was some issues set, some motion set on the 28th of November. Miss Rice didn't show up for that. That's when her motion to quash was set. Um, uh, Megan Miller from my office went. We told them we had a December 2nd court date, which was set in front of O'Neill by Rosenberg because he, uh, Rosenberg didn't have time for an evidentiary hearing. Miss Rice didn't show up for that. Uh, we had put a response to her motion with a counter request for relief. She just doesn't even show up. She sends me the day before a, um, uh, a notice that she's striking her motion. And even though I let, after, after work hours, and so, you know, we've been uh, compromised on that. And we went to Mike O'Neill and we said, we need an evidentiary hearing on this contempt. And the, when it was filed, it was set for the 21st tomorrow, which is in the afternoon. It's probably an appearance, but Mike O'Neill said, Rep. Magistrate O'Neill said that he would hold the morning of the 22nd, starting at 8.30 in the morning, for us to put on our, have an evidentiary hearing on the contempt. Um, you know, Mr. Guider has intentionally continued to interfere with uh, her ability to rehabilitate with her daughter. I don't think we need a guardian ad litem. Janie Berryman's involved. We've got supervised visit visitation people involved. There's plenty of people involved in this case who's going to be able to give testimony to the court about what's going on and how to remedy this moving forward. So we oppose that, getting another guard, getting a guardian litem in the case. It's not a dependent neglect action. There's not allegations of uh, neglect or abuse that are pending. All right. Um, as to the motion to consolidate, I'm going to grant that. And I, I have heard this. I think the order, if there's any questions about the order, any issues as to the contempt of the order, I should be the one to that as well. Um, knowing these parties, knowing this case, whoever, whatever side wins is going to get appealed to me anyway. So we'll just remove that little step and we'll all hear everything. Um, as to the motion to appoint a guardian lighter, I will grant that as well. I do think that Ms. Palmack has a extensive history on this case as well. Uh, the, the issues of how the visitations are affecting the child will be important um, for the court to hear. Um, there was a reason that the court appointed her in the first place due to some of the um, issues. Even though it started out as a parenting case, there was a issues um, um, proper guardianship with the mother, and I think that that is something that the court needs to make sure that we're on top of, making sure that when she does move towards super unsupervised visits or whatever, we move towards that the child, the child's best interest is represented and um, affected. So I am going to reappoint um, Ms. Padme. Can you see? Yeah, I have spoken with her, and she is going to accept the appointment. Okay. Um, so I will hear the petition for contempt. As to the petition, the motion to quash the subpoena, I will wait until the guardian lighto has been appointed and to give me more guidance on whether it would be appropriate for um, Abigail. Um, or to testify on that court date or not. So I will hold off on, I will take that one under advisement. As to um, modification of the order, as I do look at the order, it does not say that she has to come back to court, so that doesn't mean that she does not have to come back to court. However, it's very clear that what it does say is the mother will not be allowed unsupervised visitation with the child until she has completed at least at least two months of therapy to visit and until the agency facilitating the therapy admission session determines that the mother is ready for unsupervised. When the agency facilitating the therapy of visitation determines that the mother is ready for unsupervised visitation, the mother shall be permitted a minimum of eight hours of unsupervised visit per week with additional visitations to be at the father's discretion. 
the time of such visitation shall be agreed upon by the party. So uh, I would need to have, um, in order to, it's not a two, two months and automatic, it's a two months and approval by the agency, and the agency would have to send something to somebody to say that. Well, and I don't think they're going to do that, Judge. I mean, that's kind of so giving them a judicial role, and, uh, you know, I don't even. The ones that we work with in the court will give us some indication of whether or not they think someone is ready for unsupervised business. Okay, so can I just set a motion and compel one of them to appear or something? And we can do it all, all at one time when we get the trial day. Well, I thought, oh, I mean, before. yes, yes. Okay, absolutely. You can feel free to do so. I'm set it on my dockets. Uh, I would be subpoenaed up there because the motion dockets aren't meant to have, um, I usually don't have to talk about motion dockets a year, doesn't work. So you set it for a motion and then um, we can at that time. Um, well, is there, can we just find an interim time that's just going to take like an hour or so or an hour and a half that we can, before we get a, a trial date set so that we can get that determination? Because I've asked them and they're, they don't, won't give me a response either way. So. Um, Seagreaves. Yes, Your Honor. Is we going forward on the 18th? Well, I would heard from Ms. Thompson that she was asking for a continuance and might be withdrawing from the case. So That's what I just heard. I guess she left out. She did. Um, I think she's in Magistrate Rigsby's courtroom. Okay. And Mr. Mr. Perrick and I are on a trial across the way. Okay. Um, my impression from Ms. Thompson is it's not going to happen on that date for the reasons we just stated. Yeah, she did in the garden line was basically. Right, so I don't know no, why you're out. I don't want, not a guardian item, but a new attorney for the mother. Oh, the mother. Shoot, I'm sorry. You're the guardian yes, item. I'm sorry. And the court should probably know this is her second attorney. I don't know how many times she gets to change lawyers, but I'll leave that to your honor to decide. Is there any objection for the continuance if I do appoint a new lawyer? I don't no. object to that. No objection? Okay. Oh, Y'all yeah, need to go right back and come right yeah, I really do. And the other case I have is that we have is with Mr. Cardwell on the, the Dubois Dubois. case. Uh -huh. we'll we think we're going to be able to settle that case. Okay. Um, so we've talked about just taking it off the trial docket and okay. we'll submit an agreed order. We feel certain that's what's going to happen. We've got to put it on the docket just to make sure we get an order. Okay. So I can put it on another motion docket. Catherine? Okay. Sure. Uh, how long is that? Um, not the first Tuesday after the holiday. Y'all <laughs> <laughs> are not working that further. first Tuesday after the holiday. <laughs> further. <laughs> January 10th? Yeah, I think that should be fine. The 10th, 10th, will, be, the 10th will be fine, Your Honor. That'll work. Okay. All right, so that one about January 10th. Can you leave your calendar on the um, other matter, and then we can get a date? There's okay. no objection on the continuance on secrets, and we get a new date. Or, or is she going to need to have a new attorney before we pick the date? Anyway. That's why I'm not going to be right now. I'm trying to get them a date. Oh. I, I see what was clear now, so I can get them a date. Oh, okay. That's all I was doing. Okay. Um, so can we be excused then? You can. Can I Can I get somebody to get your calendar? Or it's over there. I can leave it with the so you can see your calendar. Okay. I'll get a, determine whether I need to get a new attorney and then um, what the date will be. All right. Thank all you. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm pretty sure I am. I'm going to check with my office, but yeah, just hold that for me. I'll do that right now in just a second. So, are, are, so is that for like the whole day or yeah, for hearing? Okay. So, would you only like to set it for a review here before then so we can address the supervisors and whether Delara will be testifying? If I can do the eight oh, mm -hmm. I can be good about testifying. I'll do everything I can, okay. except for, um, yeah, we can do this, you know, before. Ms. Regulate, you ought to call in her. 
her as you want to call the word a witness, a witch petition? Or a witch man? Uh, hang on just a second. Okay, so January 18th is good. I just, she had a criminal matter. I just wanted to make sure she was clear on that. So, um, yes. On, okay, and uh, yes, on both petitions, actually. Check okay. on that we one. We can let you bounce back. <laughs> Which courtroom is it in? Uh, it is this. Okay, that's an easy bounce. <coughs> yeah, hang on, I'm just. Easy I'm checking the on that. Is good for you I'm checking on that one too. Okay. All right. We'll come back to it when we hear from the um, garment lion. All right, so right now we're holding both of those days? Both of those days, yeah, right now. All right, so. Um, what we could do is preliminary issues on the 18th and then final hearing on the 30th if, we get, if we're able to get both of those days. And um, I, have, we, I do have an issue, and I don't, I mean, this issue with this list that apparently the father has provided of things that mother can't talk about, I mean, she doesn't even know what that is. So. Can we ask that they go ahead and either that he be prohibited from interfering with the visits and that that discretion be left to the supervisor or that we be given any information that he's given to the supervisor? Because this is just going to cause ongoing problems. Your Honor, the list is in your order of what she can't talk about. You can't talk about the court proceedings, can't keep pushing for homeschooling, you can't speak negatively about him. It's in the order. So that's it, those three things? Sounds like it. Well, there was a lot of extensive stuff that I put in the order. Because I needed to spell it out clearly to your client about what you could and couldn't say. There were a lot of different ways that she referred to Mr. Geiger, which I said were inappropriate, which she was enjoyed from doing. Okay, so we can provide a copy of that section of the order to the supervisor then. Absolutely. All right, we'll come back to you. All right. So, should we?